welcome. We just had a meeting of the board of directors for the month of December. And yes. how do you feel about this, Ryan? Good, good. Bittersweet. Last meeting, but good good meeting covered some good stuff. Chris, how many square feet is your house? Oh, that's a random question. Uh, 1,496 on the main floor, and well, I'd have to estimate the lower level. Mine's 10,000 oh, square feet. I measured it myself. <laughs> Actually, I took it off an old listing card. Oh, that's a good idea. I think yeah. um, maybe we should um, keep doing that, or you think that's a bad idea? Well, maybe we should. I mean, we're realtors. Should we give accurate information to the public when we sell homes? Well, I would hope, sure hope so. But um, So we talked about I, that. I today, can right? tell you that when I bought my house, it did not say what I just told you for square footage. It was higher than that. And as I, actually, it's not actually. So you told the truth. I exaggerated <laughs> mine a little. Um, so we talked about that today, though, right? The MLS Policy Committee. Correct. So um, so we talked about square footage and how important it is to be accurate on the MLS. And uh, we have options for what, appraisal, blueprint, um, name off some of the other ones. Uh, measuring. Municipality, yeah. measuring it. And we have pre previous listing and other. other. And so we don't really want to see previous listing or other very often, but we didn't make a rule you can't use it, but we really don't want to see it very often because previous listings can be inaccurate. Just for example, you said my house, it would be inaccurate if I yeah. used that on my, if I sold my house. 100%, the previous so listing. do your job, put the right square footage on there. Um, so the other day I'm sleeping, someone knocks on my door, then I hear him knocking on the window and apparently someone put my house on Craigslist for 300 bucks a month. I mean, 10,000 square feet for 300 bucks a month awesome. for rent. It was probably so what, me. What's going on with that? <laughs> well, Craigslist, that, that scam has been going on forever. Quite um, a while. How many since Craigslist began? Since, so, maybe. And a lot of people are making money off of it, so they keep doing it. So that's what we're finding with any scammers out there. And there's a bunch of scams going on right now um, that if people can make money off it, they're going to keep doing it. So. What do we do about it? And that's the real question is... Get the information out, I guess. Educate the educate realtors, the public, the public the, to verify that a home's actually for rent or not for rent by seeing if it's for sale maybe at grar.com. Correct. And, so uh, we're looking at ways to try to help alleviate that problem. Um, and so um, one of the ideas is just to put a Craigslist ad out there that says, beware of scams on Craigslist. Um, so that's one thing we're going to do, but we're also going to do some public adv advocacy stuff and try to get it out to the public that be careful when you're um, looking on Craigslist or any of these third yeah. party sites for rentals that they may not be for rent. And if you're going, if someone's asking you to send a check to some somewhere, don't do it because it's probably a, a scam. Yeah, so, so verify. Watch out for those. Um, community involvement, we're big on that. Our mission statement, which you can't see off the screen, making life better, people, homes, community. What do we have going on at the community? So, um, I'm trying to think. Adam Fuller came and talked to us mm -hmm. today uh, from the community involvement. And he had, they had some ideas of some um, things to do. Uh, there's schools out there. Let's be honest. There's needs out there all over the place. Yeah. Um, but they went and looked at what are some needs in the schools, and then some of the needs were, you know, mittens, hats, gloves, all those kind of things. Yeah. But unpaid there's also lunch unpaid lunch balances, those kind of things. And so they're looking at well, how can we help um, and show our concern for the community and reach out to the community. And the, um, what the biggest way possible? Where can we make the biggest impact? And if we could pick schools and kids, that could be a huge maybe void that realtors could play a part in filling? Correct. And so they did a lot of research on just the school issue with unpaid balances and showed us a whole bunch of information about that. I think we need to get that information out to the membership so that if you guys want to, as members, um, support some of these schools, sometimes it's just education, but also we're looking at ways to uh, fundraise money for that. Yeah. So that. stay tuned for more details on that. This is in its infinite stages, you know, but we'll... We'll, we'll get it figured out. But also next year in 2019, the Community Involvement and the Crisis Task Force are going to join committees and that will be one. And yes. so that'll be a powerful committee that does a lot of good coming out of yep. GAR. And they do, a, there's a lot that overlaps already there. And so we decided to merge those two committees and put a little more strength behind both of them. Yeah, so. definitely. So um, I, know it's, I know it's winter out, but the other day it was kind of sunny. So I was laying out in my backyard trying to get a, a tan for my photo here. And some little thing came buzzing over my head. Um, you think you know that was a licensed pilot flying a drone, or what was that? 
I don't know. I think it was your nosy neighbor. My nosy neighbor flying a drone. <laughs> Could have been a realtor flying a drone over Could've the been. neighborhood to take pictures. I should have been. Were they licensed? I don't know. Should have they been licensed? Uh, they should. They and should. I, and Do I have a policy I'm no, on that? I'm no expert in the um, federal laws on that, but I know there is some. And so uh, we looked at some other association policies on that, and we put one in place that uh, will, it really just says what the federal regulation is. And so um, you'll see that coming out as one of our policies for drones. Okay, good. I think, I mean, other than that, we had a, some of our normal agenda, all the committee reports, good last meeting. Um, for the year. Yeah, anything else We're you want to you you say? I won't be back next year, so <laughs> you will be in great hands with uh, Mr. Chris Keekster next year. Well, it looks like you're going to be president forever here. <laughs> well, well, oh, yeah. Huh. Well, thought we'd update so, the conference room a little bit and make it a little bit prettier. So you're going back in history and going forward? Or yes. Is there, oh, wait, you left a spot for me on the end. I was going to let you know that I'm actually going to stay on as president forever. Will I be president? All right. That's my last rule. All right. right no, and all, and all joking and fun, had a great year serving. It was a privilege to lead. I will take away much more than I probably left behind here. And um, thank you to the members and the board of directors and the GRAR leadership for um, entrusting me to hold this position. And we hope everyone has an incredible uh, Christmas. So Merry Christmas to all. And we'll see some of you at the Ward's Breakfast where yes, we get Friday. to install Chris for next year. Yes. And I hope it, uh, my fun part about that is we get to hand out a lot of awards. So uh, we had a fun as a committee putting those together. And so I'm looking forward to doing that. So thank you, Ryan. Yes. Good luck next year. See ya.